Hello everyone, this is Brian Lagunas and I'd like to welcome you to the first video in a series of posts covering how to build a PRISM application. The application we're going to be building is called IG Outlook. The prefix of IG is because we're going to be using controls from the Infragistics Net Advantage WPF and Silverlight tool suite. And of course Outlook is because we're going to be building a PRISM application that mimics the Microsoft Outlook application. So let's go ahead and start writing the application. Whenever creating a PRISM application, the first thing I always do is create a new solution. It's a blank solution. So I'm going to navigate to where we want to keep our solution. And I'm going to name this IG Outlook Solution. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the location in Windows Explorer. This is because I like to have my directory structure set up a certain way when creating PRISM applications. So what I do first, I create a new folder. I'll call it lib. This is where I'm going to put all my libraries, such as PRISM. The next folder I'm going to create is called source. This is where all the source files are going to go. So now I'm going to go into the source. I'm going to create another folder. Because this application is going to target two different platforms, I'm going to create a directory structure for both platforms. I'm going to create one for Silverlight and create one for WPF. The next thing I do is I go into each of these folders and I create another folder called Modules. Okay, great. So I have my directory structure how I like it. So the next step is to copy our PRISM libraries into our lib folder. I already had the folder available to copy, so I'm just going to control C those into that location. We'll navigate into the folder structure. We'll see we're using PRISM 4.1. We have our Silverlight binaries, and we have our WPF binaries. Okay, great. Now we have our directory structure set up just the way I like it. The next thing I do is I go into our Solution Explorer and I add solution folders. Okay, so I have a solution folder for each platform, and each platform has a solution folder for its modules. The next step is to create our entry application, our bootstrapper application. This is the application that's going to be the entry point to our Prism app and contain the bootstrapper and the shell in which all the modules will be injected. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click. We're going to start with Silverlight because it's always easier to go from Silverlight to WPF than the other way around. I'm going to add a new project. I'm going to make sure that I'm browsing to the source location of my Silverlight project on my directory. Make sure I have a Silverlight, Silverlight application. We'll call this IGOutlook.sl for Silverlight. I don't want to host this in a website because I'm not concerned about that, and we're using Silverlight 5. Now the first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to go to the project properties, and in the default namespace where it says IGOutlook.sl, I'm going to remove the .sl. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my main page. Now that I've deleted the main page, I have to open up my app.xaml.cs, find the application startup method, and remove this line of code where we're setting the root visual to an instance of the main page. Now we need to create a new shell. This is where all of our regions are going to be defined where we're going to be injecting our views. So let's add a new item. It's going to be a Silverlight user control. We'll just call it shell. And we're just going to leave it empty for now. Now it's time to create our bootstrapper. This is the entry point to the application 
where we're going to register Prism and start getting everything hooked up. So let's start by creating a new class and call it Bootstrapper. Now we need to add references to the Prism library. So let's go ahead and add reference. Make sure when the correct solution demos lib prism 4.1 Silverlight. We want to grab the Microsoft that practices that prism, Unity extensions, and Unity DLLs. Now that we have our references, we can derive our bootstrapper from Unity Bootstrapper. Make sure we implement our abstract methods. In the case of the create shell method, we're simply going to return the container dot resolve shell. Now you're going to notice that we actually would get a compile error if we try to build this right now. That's because we need to add a using statement. We need to add a using to Microsoft.Practices.Unity. This allows us to have the extension method of resolve type of T. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to the app.xaml.cs file and find the application startup method. This is where we're going to create a new instance of our bootstrapper. And we need to call run on the bootstrapper instance. Next, let's go to our shell. And I just want to throw something in here so I know that when we run this application, our shell is resolved properly. So let's just throw a text block. Now we're not quite done yet. We need to override the initialize shell method. And here, we're going to set the application.current.rootVisual to our shell instance. So now if I were to run this, you see we have our shell properly displayed and resolved in our Prism application. Now before I move on to the WPF shell application, I want to go ahead and add one more project to our Silverlight platform. So we're going to add a new project, Silverlight class library. Make sure I put it in our directory structure in the correct location. I'm going to call this IG Outlook Dot infrastructure dot SL. This is going to be the project in which all our common code that's shared across both platforms and all modules will be located. We're going to target several like five. Go ahead and delete the class that was created by default. I want to go into the properties and I want to delete the .sl off the namespace and assembly name. I also want to go ahead and add references to our Microsoft.Practices.Prism and Unity DLLs. And we can call that good. Now let's go ahead and move on to WPF. We're going to take the same approach that we took on the Silverlight. Except we're just going to be creating WPF applications. I'm going to head, add a new project. This time, it's going to be a Windows WPF application. Make sure I put it in the correct location in our directory. IG Outlook. Once again, I'll go ahead and delete the main window. We'll go ahead, open up our app.xaml, remove our startup UI. Startup URI. I'm going to go ahead and add our references to our Prism library. P 
prism, unity extensions, unity, We'll go ahead and add a new window. Remember, this is a WPF application, so its entry point is going to be a window. Call this shell. Just so we see something when it launches. Now, you would probably think that you'd want to create a new class called Bootstrapper, just like we did before, and add a new instance and duplicate all that code we just we just typed in there. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to actually share this exact same instance across both these projects. So in order to do that, we're going to add an existing item. We're going to navigate to our Silverlight application, select the bootstrapper, and here where it says add, we have a little drop down button. We're going to say add as link. So what that does is that links the same instance of that file into this project. Now there are a couple differences we're going to run into, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But first, we need to let our WPF application know about our bootstrapper. So we need to go into the app.xaml.cs. We need to override the on startup method. And in here, we're going to create a new instance of our bootstrapper. And of course, we're going to call the run method. Now, if I were to run this, we're going to get a compile error. We can't even build it. And that's because WPF doesn't have a root visual. So, so how do we get around this issue? How can we tell if this class is in a Silverlight application versus a WPF application? Well, if you were to open up the properties of your Silverlight app and you go to the build, you'll notice a conditional compilation symbols Silverlight. So by using this, we can do a syntax as follows. If we're in Silverlight, we're going to use the application.current.rootvisual. Else, we're going to use application.current.mainwindow is our shell. application.current.mainwindow.show. So now we can properly build this project. Not only that, we can run this project and our shell application launches as expected. Now I want you to notice something. If I open this file from within my WPF project, the Silverlight related code will be grayed out. It's not applicable to this implementation. So if I close the bootstrapper and open it from Silverlight, you'll see that the WPF specific code is commented out instead. Not commented out, but it, it's grayed out and not applicable to this implementation. So this allows us to share code across multiple platforms and different projects within our solution. So now that we have both our shell applications going, I need to do the same thing I did in Silverlight and add an infrastructure project to our WPF application. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new project. And this is actually going to be a WPF user control library. And I'll show you why as soon as we create it. Make sure I put it in the correct location in our directory. We'll call this IG Outlook. Dot infrastructure. Delete the user control that it gives us. I want to go ahead and add references. To Prism, make sure we're doing WPF. We only need Prism and Unity. Now, the reason I made this a user control library and not like a class library is that way when I right click my project, I will get items such as window, page, user control, or resource dictionary uh, from my menu 
Otherwise, you'd get window forms type options such as class and component and things like that. So that's why I use a user control library. So let's go ahead and run these side by side. We have our Silverlight application. And we'll have our WPF application. So we have two applications. So far, all they're sharing is a bootstrapper. And the next video, we're going to start setting up our shell and some view models. So until then, if you have any questions, you can reach me on my blog at brianlagunas.com, on Twitter at brianlagunas, or just leave a comment section uh, on this post. And see you all next time.